Welcome to the Steve Reeve Podcast with the best moments from the past week and a few things that didn't make it to air. Tuesday. Should restaurants be charging a puke cleanup fee? Uh, a brunch spot in the U.S., uh, I think it's San Diego or San Francisco, somewhere in California, it doesn't matter, uh, is getting internet famous a little bit because the, well, the magnifying glass has been put on this restaurant after a laminated notice to customers posted on the wall, uh, typos and all, was snapped and then shared online. For context, for context, uh, they offer bottomless mimosas at this particular establishment, and the sign reads, Dear All Mimosa Lovers, Please drink responsibly and know your limits. A $50 cleaning fees will automatically include in your tap, I think it's supposed to be tab, uh, when you throw up in the public areas. Thank you so much for your understanding. Ha. Well, my first thought is maybe put a bottom in those mimosas and watch the oversee, over-serving, but I do not hate the idea of people being on the hook to, you know, clean up after themselves, or at least contribute to the cleaning effort, uh, especially in a place with a health code to adhere to, like a restaurant. Um, the threat of a fine is a deterrent, right? Maybe it's a successful one. Maybe. I don't know. Haven't seen what their bathroom looks like after Sunday brunch is over. Um, but, you know, threat of fine makes sense to me. I know around the sidewalks of Fort McMurray, I've had to step around puke more often than I'd like to be able to claim. And that doesn't even take much to clean. You just need to hose it off, you know? Kind of gross. But it, it, that's if you're not aiming to prevent it happening in the first place, of course. Awkward family texts, Thanksgiving weekend edition. My girlfriend is from New Zealand, and she uh, has all of her family back in the home country. Communication going on with text lines and big, you know, family threads and stuff to stay in touch. And of course, uh, Thanksgiving comes around, and they did live here for a while. And so they are familiar with the Thanksgiving holiday and everything, and so my girlfriend wishes them a happy Thanksgiving. A little love is shared, and then Dad chimes in and says, you know, well, have a blessed day. Very nice thing. So she immediately answers back, my girlfriend, that is, and says, yes, yes, <laughs> I hope that you have a lovely time this weekend as well. Breedings instead of blessings. The autocorrect got a hold of it. It said breedings instead of blessings. Many breedings to you. Sister got back with a laugh reaction and just enjoy the turkey or enjoy your meal. Dad gets back, though, with breedings are a good idea for grandchildren. I, th the sentence I was not expecting to hear. Uh, hey, I mean, I can't fault the logic. Just don't hold your breath. The Foo Fighters, Shania Twain, joined them on stage to perform at Austin City Limits. And uh, just this weekend, uh, Shania Twain helped out with Best of You, specifically, and the moment is, of course, available online. Fan recorded, so audio's not fantastic, but big, big, beautiful red hair on Shania as she rocks out with the uh, Foo Fighters. Brian Adams in the news because uh, he has also made a big announcement of being on tour, but over in the UK and next year. He's also going to have a uh, Royal Albert Hall residency, an absolutely iconic venue. And at that venue, uh, each time that he does a performance, it's going to be a different album performed in full. Very, very interesting. Uh, this is going to start off in May of next year. And the Rolling Stones in the news, Keith Richards saying that his guitar playing has absolutely changed because of arthritis and that he has had to uh, relearn a lot of different ways, a lot of different techniques. And the fascinating thing is, he says, as he told the BBC, the more you play it, the less you know it. It provides you with endless questions. You can never know the whole thing. It's impossible. And he goes on to say, you're never not going to school. You never finish school. Uh, good advice. Wednesday. I love pumpkins! Big pumpkins. Uh, we were talking last week about the huge one that was on tour down into the states that came out of BC, but uh, Alberta's own homegrown is pretty darn huge as well. I mean, it's not far off. It came in at exactly 2,037 and a half pounds. Don Cruz of Lloyd Minster, uh, the person who grew that, and uh, that was weighed at the specifically the Smoky Lake Pumpkin Fair. The Great White North Pumpkin Way Off, the annual event where actually Don had the largest pumpkin in Alberta yesteryear as well. That was uh, just over 2,000 pounds. Also, this guy's got some good crop. This guy's got some good dirt, some land that's uh, making these pumpkins gigantic. I, um, I love it. And apparently I found out at this fair, according to the comments, I mean, you take it with a grain of salt, that they do do the thing where they drop giant pumpkins on cars. I've always wanted to see that with my own two eyes. I thought that was a, an era uh, gone by. I thought that was something that happened in the past and that was forever etched in my memory watching TV in the mornings in October. But no, 
It's a real thing. It still happens. I gotta go and check it out. Something is happening with Seinfeld. And this coming directly from Jerry Seinfeld himself. If you didn't uh, hear about it, he was doing a stand-up show at a, uh, a, a venue in Boston over the weekend. And he was responding to an audience member. He often does a little bit of a talk back when he's uh, in front of audiences and takes questions and everything. And one person was asking if he liked the ending of the show that lasted nine seasons. Of course, the uh, two-parter last episode is a bit divisive. In fact, very, very much so. And uh, he didn't really answer, but he did say the following. In a video that's been shared online, you can hear it. He says... Here's what I'll tell you, okay? But you can't tell anybody. Something is going to happen that has to do with that ending. And just what you're thinking about, Larry and I are also thinking about. So, you'll see. Larry, of course, being Larry David, who co-created the show. I, I don't know if this means a reboot. I don't know if this means a new season. I don't know if it means just like a retcon of the actual ending of the series. I have no idea. But apparently, Seinfeld and friends kind of do. They're working on something. He's very wise, though, to be mysterious about it, because there's no point in actually getting people's hopes up with an exact date or exact information. It's kind of like setting up a reservation and then, you know, not having the car. See, you know how to take the reservation. You just don't know how to hold the reservation. And that's really the most important part of the reservation, the holding. Anybody can just take them. You're listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. We need to start the on-hold revolution. Anytime you need to talk to somebody about something, you know, you got a service that's not working, you need to set up a change, a move, or something like that, you know, chat windows on websites is exactly what they try to make you use every single time. Chat web websites or, or forums... You get a, forms are worse. You get a message back like three months later. At least with a chat, you're going to get something back that same instance, but they never work and they always lead to just talking to a human on the phone eventually. Don't you find that? More often than not, that human doesn't even glance at the chat log once you actually do get to talk to them. You've got that awful low quality hold music. I don't mind it so much, but after a while, it just starts to cook your brain. Then you finally get through. You get able to set up a callback. The voice comes through. Uh, would you like us to put you in, in line and we'll, we'll give you a phone call back? Does that work for you? And I go, yes, that does work for me. I don't want to sit here. And then you get that call back. They go, okay, cool. You're next up in line. Wait on hold. And I go, what was the point of the callback? Finally, finally, 20 minutes later, you will actually get to talk to somebody. And then usually the thing is resolved in like five, ten minutes. If somebody had just picked up the phone a lot sooner, it could have been done. could have been dealt with. You know, you don't need to start a whole ticket and wait a month to actually fix it up, right? We need to start the on-hold revolution. And up next, tackling that whole thing where you can order any kind of service or device online with ease, but the second you want to cancel something, oh, you got to call and talk to someone and get offered a million things before they actually let you. Bruce Springsteen has opened up about what's been going on with his health. He had to postpone his current tour in early September due to a uh, monster of a uh, peptic ulcer disease situation that he's got going on. Just last week, they announced the postponed dates, which will take place in 2024, but it was on his, uh, his series on Sirius XM from my home to yours yesterday that he said uh, some details about it and that the postponed shows uh, were going to just have to be a reality, thanking fans for their understanding. He says, I'm deeply sorry, but this belly thing, despite my ability to laugh at it, has been a monster and is still, unfortunately, rocking my internal world. Um, doctor's orders, he's got to stay recovering for the rest of the year. We might see the Rolling Stones on tour. There is absolutely no guarantee, but it was on the uh, the very last leg of the last tour that Mick Jagger told uh, Keith Richards, that he wanted to record the band as soon as they got off the road, as soon as possible, because they're a band that is lubricated specifically. Mick saying that the entire uh, new album that's coming out next week from the Rolling Stones is due to Mick Jagger's angst. And if people are still standing next year, they may tour about it. But no dates, as I said. Guns N' Roses haven't decided on a tour or anything like that, but they have added some dates at a venue they've never played before in their hometown. In L.A. at the Hollywood Bowl, they'll be playing November 1st and 2nd, and tickets are going to go on sale for some lucky people at the end of the week.
Hey, Alexa. Play the Steve Reeve podcast. Halloween horrors. It's been my entire month so far and only a third of the way into it. Uh, watching a movie just about every single day, uh, you know, sometimes missing it, having to double up. You know, life gets in the way. But still, the point is getting through a ton of horrors throughout October, enjoying the spirit of the season. Yesterday's movie was an anniversary, a milestone addition to the calendar. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark a.k.a. Cassandra Peterson in real life. I mean, uh, she's done the character for a great, great many years. She still continues to. Uh, I don't know if she does too many public appearances, but I mean, for decades, she was doing stuff at Knott's Berry Farm every Halloween. Uh, always got something going on, and that is just an absolute classic. So, just a cheesy movie, but a movie that knows it's cheesy. It, it leans into it quite a bit. 35 years old this year, and just full of so many hilarious and yet incredibly stupid jokes. That's why you love Elvira. But if they ever ask about me, tell them I was more than just a great set of boobs. I was also an incredible pair of legs. And tell them, tell them that when all is said and done, I only ask that people remember me by two simple words. Any two as long as they're simple. Thursday. There's a new way to carve your pumpkins I've seen online. New uh, new way that actually is pretty hands-off, because you don't have to carve them at all. I don't know how many people are actually doing it. Just a few people have made videos of themselves doing it. Uh, it's letting animals carve your pumpkin for you. And not really carve, but, uh, you know, eat destroy, demolish in a in a way that kind of resembles a face. I've seen it a few different ways, uh, a few different animals involved. One was just uh, chickens. So all they did was they carved the skin off of where they wanted the holes to be, the eyes, the mouth, everything, uh, and then just let the chickens peck away at it because, I guess, the skin is a little tough, but if they can get at it underneath, they'll just eat and eat and eat. And so, eventually, you get this absolutely terrifying-looking pumpkin that the chickens carved. Another one that I've seen is uh, is deer. They've allowed deer to uh, eat a snack on it, and I think there was peanut butter that was like smeared in spots. Same thing for the chipmunk slash squirrels. Getting the rodents to help out as well. And the, uh, the end result is pretty much always the same. A little bit different, but ultimately, one of the scariest looking jack-o'-lantern pumpkins you can imagine. It just looks horrifying and perfect, and probably not going to last that long if you do it this early into the month, but still... What an easy way to get a scary pumpkin on the go. Why not? My pets, my two cats, probably not going to be too much help in this situation. Halloween costumes, uh, there's always a new crop every single year that make you go, what, really, what? What do you think the most popular uh, Halloween costumes are going to be this year? I would have put my money on Barbie and Ken, absolutely would have. But then I think that maybe the world got taken over a little bit more by the uh, Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey situation. Are they? Aren't they? Will they? Won't they? Oh, the world waits with bated breath. And in the meantime, probably gathering some costume gear together to cobble some uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey looks together. Why not mash that up? Be uh, Taylor Barbie and uh, Ken Kelsey. Or even flip it. Ken uh, Swift and Barbie Kelsey, I don't know. Uh, you do it. It's your costume. <laughs> there's also some really hilarious ones. I've seen a dumpster fire costume for this year. I love it. Uh, there's, uh, of course, sexy everything that you can think of, including sexy Mario, sexy Rosie the Riveter. Yeah, World War II flashback. That's right. <laughs> it's on there. Sexy magic. Eight ball, it's happening. Now, the one that I really want that I can't really have because it's for toddlers is the chicken nuggets and dipping sauce. Make this in an adult size. Sold immediately. Out the door. Thanks for listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast from 100.5 Cruise FM. Keith Richards talking about Charlie Watts, uh, of course, the late uh, drummer for the Rolling Stones. And uh, he was talking on the Howard Stern Show about how he thinks about Watts every single day. And uh, it's the first thing that he sees as he comes out of his bedroom, a portrait of Charlie on his staircase. So he gives him a salute every single morning and in fact confirming that charlie watts will feature as the drummer on two of the songs from the upcoming album that's actually going to be out within a week meanwhile Cher has had to deny some allegations that she was ringleader 
of the plan for kidnapping her son, adult son, Elijah. Um, this was something that came to light last month. He was accused, or she was accused of hiring men to kidnap her 47 year old son as a way to stop him from being able to get in touch with his estranged wife and also uh, get him away from drugs. Uh, he, this is a weird, of course, situation where it seems to be a benevolent cause in the first place. But she still denies any involvement in the situation itself. Of course, you know, still trying to make sure that her son is as best as he can, as well as he can be. Bigfoot sighted again? Here we go. Yes, a new video and a series of photos have made it online claiming to show us the latest and greatest footage of Sasquatch. None other than Sasquatch. Uh, it was all in Colorado specifically, and a train was going by. There's a little movement to the video. Um, people are calling this the best, the best footage since the classic one from the 1960s, the so-called Patterson-Gimlin clip for the two people, that uh, the videographers who captured that. You know, the one. You've seen it. You know it. The Kokanee beer commercials have parodied it and everything. Uh, this was uh, a few snaps, though, in the San Juan National Forest. Uh, there was a couple as well as a man named Brandon who kind of independently, I guess, saw him, but they were the only three people on this train of a hundred or more who did see the Sasquatch. I mean, I'm skeptical. I'm always skeptical. Video looks cool. I don't know how it was accomplished. It does look like a sort of ape gorilla standing erect, walking around, and then setting down. Popping a squat, popping a Sasquatch squat. Take a look at the video for yourself. Uh, you decide if it's legit or not. All I can think about, though, is Jack Black in uh, the Tenacious D movie running into Meatloaf playing the Sasquatch. Oh my god, Sasquatch! <laughs> what are you doing out here? I was just walking in your beautiful forest. Oh, it's not my forest, brother. It's everyone. Friday. I'm sure you've seen all these high school photos, these yearbook photos floating around all over the internet. Uh, just an explosion of them lately, and everybody looks so great, right? Why is that? Well, because they're fake. They're AI-generated, just the latest trend of it. Uh, yeah, no longer are you looking like an abstract painting or an anime character. Now you're looking like you, but younger you, back in the high school days. And they're, they're a little too perfect, you know? Clone you looks great. But they kind of do give off that hollow, artificial, creepy vibe. It's a quality that's hard to describe, but it's there. And, and I gotta say, I am thousand times more interested in your actual high school photos from way back when. I mean, these are cool, but the real photos are where it's at. Imperfections and all. One year, I had the classic tip-of-the-nose zit just pulsing for the photo. Uh, I've had, you know, glasses with the shine off of the, the, the light bulbs going like crazy. Uh, I've had all kinds of interesting and not-so-great photos from the yearbook days. Uh, and so I'm doing it. I'm being the first one to do it. Posting it up there. I gotta say, with these new AI-generated ones, where's the laser background or the library aesthetic? You know, makes the photos feel more real when you have that fake backdrop, all right? And when it's an actual photo. Let's see, where are your high school photos. Canadian Songwriters Hall of Fame is going to be uh, getting together for a 25th anniversary on November 1st. And four big songs from the 80s and 90s are going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. They are Brand Van 3000's Drinking in L.A., Informer from Snow, My Definition of a Boombastic Jazz Style from Dream Warriors, I haven't thought about that song in a minute, and Martha and the Muffins' Echo Beach. Yes, big celebration, big scenario going on on November 1st. We'll see if there's anything televised or, you know, anything that gets posted online after the fact. Meanwhile, one half of Eurythmics, Dave Stewart, has announced a new group. First single from that group uh, is Brings Me Home. And it's going to be part of a 10-track rock opera, a so-called modern rock opera that's going to be out next week, along with an accompanying film. Very interesting. The project, the band, the team, called the Time Experience Project. And no word specifically if it's going to be a limited time thing or if they intend to do stuff into the future as well. You're listening to the Steve Reeve Podcast, Podcast. from 100.5 Cruise FM. Always double check the slideshows that your phone makes. Learn from my experience. All right, first of all, 
What I'm talking about is, I, I don't know if every phone from every manufacturer does this, but I have an iPhone, and every once in a while, uh, it will bring a collection of photos together into uh, sort of a slideshow. It adds music and everything, and it does a pretty good job. I am thoroughly impressed each time that it does this. For instance, I took a trip to Drumheller just this past summer, and uh, just th- this morning, it grabbed that location, grabbed that time frame of the trip, and it grabbed a ton of photos and a couple videos and made a sweet little memory out of it. But you have to watch the whole thing and trust me on this, because without fail, it seems like every single time my phone decides, hey, you know what, might be time to make one of these little memory collections, little slideshows for the for the boss man, for the owner. Uh, it will grab one or two photos that have nothing to do with the trip out of context and in the worst case, it'll be the kind of photo that you, uh, you know, hold your phone while you're showing somebody an image on there for fear that they might swipe and see, if you know what I mean, if you take my meaning. Sometimes you take a vacation, and it's not just pictures of scenery that end up on your phone. So before you save the video, send it off to your folks to be like, what a great time we had, I'm telling you. You're gonna, you're gonna want to check through the whole thing. <laughs> Yikes. Collar pull. On the phone line with me right now, and I, as I understand it, you're able to take a little break from work to be able to t- chat with me. Danny Martinello, comedian. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm just, uh, just you caught me in the middle of making creative craft uh, camp food here up in Civio. <laughs> so you eat the same thing for a couple days. You know, you want to change it up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Whether you're making mint sauce with the little tea bags <laughs> or you're making some kind of other creation, you always got to get something going. Never satisfied with things the way they are, I take it. You got to mess with stuff. Like, I, yeah, I got to find the little fine tuning things, you know? <laughs> well, um, it's really cool to talk to you. Uh, the reason we're talking, if, if people uh, have no idea that it's coming, they should. No, Kokanee Comedy Night is returning. Double header to kick off again. You're going to be uh, double heading with Ryan Short on Thursday, October 19th. How are you feeling about it? Oh man, I'm stoked. It's always a pleasure coming to Fort McMurray. The crowds are, uh, are righteous, you know. They're always down for a good time, and uh, I, I enjoyed myself last time. And we took a little bit of a hiatus, but it's nice to kind of come back and uh, play for the crowds. Can't wait for it. Uh, as I understand it, originally from Edmonton, right? So you're an Alberta boy. Yeah. What is uh, top of your head? One of the funniest things about Alberta. What's something that you look at Alberta and go, "That's hilarious." Oh, it's just the people, I guess. The genuine, uh, no, no crap answers. They just love it. They want production, and <laughs> we're a little bit of a misfit salt in the country. But at the end of the day, I, I feel like we're, the, you know, the heart, the heart and soul of this country. <laughs> misfits is a good way to put it. I think we're misfits yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Canada as a whole is a nice barbecue. We're the, we're the cool, crazy, a little bit off to the side uh, family member of the bunch. <laughs> uh, what What is a recommendation for an audience member? Like when you go to a show, you want people to have a good time what's your best advice for them yeah i'd say just come with a come with a positive attitude and enjoy the show and uh you know just uh just know that you're here for entertainment and uh just have a good time really in general don't come to the crowd if you're got a if you got a poopy attitude about life you know and if you do well, then you're gonna come and you're gonna get changed and i hope you can see the light that shines in this world all right yeah hallelujah right <laughs> hands up yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> i don't need a dark cloud going through here all right winter's coming stay <laughs> home if you're a little poo poo nana but we'll change it we'll leave yeah. it. We'll, you know you, you come in a negative and you leave a positive how about that that's the whole point yeah absolutely uh so the 18th or sorry 19th at 8 p.m on thursday uh double header for kokanee comedy night returning thanks for chatting denny no worries at all it's gonna be a fun time come out to the show come have a couple wobble pops before after during and, and enjoy yourself and tickets are only 20 bucks you can't go wrong no you can't Transmission over. Want more Steve? New podcast episodes happen every Friday or just tune into the Steve Reeve Show. Weekday mornings starting at 5.30 a.m. on 100.5 Cruise FM.